But listen, the China threat does keep growing. The dictatorship is in fact now done in our neighbourhood what it promised it would not. It has built military bases on three islands that it actually built in the South China Sea. These are actually military bases it has built and said it wouldn't. And in a sea that is territory that is actually stolen against international law. We've belatedly seen the threat. Australia's now scrambling to properly arm itself after years of being asleep at the wheel. Well, finally, good news. You've heard a lot of criticism about some of those efforts. Well, good news. Our Air Force has, well, I think anyway, our Air Force has now wheeled out a new Australian-built drone called the Ghost Bat. It's a Cessna-sized pilotless aircraft that can do surveillance or can be armed and perform manoeuvres that no manned aircraft could. Also announced today by the Defence Minister, a new military space force. OK, it's going to be small, they admit that. But I guess we'll still be there too, looking at hypersonic missiles and satellite communications. Or That's the promise. Joining me is Australia's top foreign affairs writer, Greg Sheridan of The Australian. Greg, you've been very critical of our media build-up, particularly the slowness, some of the weapons being chosen. But the Ghost Bat drone, at least seems to me, uh, a very promising development, not least because it's Australian-made, uh, and not before time, with China building up like this. Well, Andrew, it's uh, just fabulous to be with you, and I'm so impressed by the woman you were just speaking to. So, uh, yeah, the, the fruit bat or whatever it's called used to be called the Loyal Wingman, and um, it's been around for years, of course. I mean, they first started giving grants about it in 2017. It's, you know, it gets announced every few months. It's another announcement yesterday. It's a fabulous thing. I am a million percent in favour of the Loyal Wingman. But yesterday I emailed and texted the Defence Minister's Press Secretary and asked two simple questions. When do we get it and how many are we getting? Absolute silence, no response. In the press today, Peter Dutton was saying, well, of course, it's not yet a done deal. We don't really have the technology down pat. We don't know. A lot of things could go wrong with it. We don't know if we'll get it or not. Now, you said a minute ago, Andrew, the right, the absolutely the key right phrase. We are scrambling to get our defences together. But tragically, we are not scrambling to get our defences together. I, I love the loyal wingman. I'm all in favour of it. But the technology to defend ourselves exists already today. We don't have to go out and invent it. You know, two years ago, we announced we were going to have this missile building capacity in Australia. We re-announced it a year ago. We re-announced it just recently. I think they're going to re-announce it again in a couple of days. But nothing has actually happened. There is no missile. And it's very simple. You just get an American company to get their subsidiary to produce missiles in Australia. But our guys in defence want to turn it into a unique emu flagged wombat didgeridoo special bespoke Australian missile which nobody else in the world uses and has never been heard of anywhere else. And that'll take a million years to develop and it'll be 28 times more expensive than anything else. In the meantime, while we're doing this, China conquers the South China Sea, Russia conquers Ukraine. And, um, you know, the best we can do is re-announce a promising drone, a very promising drone. But, Andrew, you know, drones have been around military for 20 years. We don't have one armed drone in the Australian Defence Force. We're about to get one. We're going to get a predator drone, which you use in Iraq or Afghanistan to hunt terrorists. Got no maritime capability whatsoever. So, absolutely, I'm with the bat, you know, good on it. But it's not absolutely the solution. Well, it didn't take you long to uh, destroy my one little uh, spark of optimism that we'd get armed properly. Ah, there you go. Well, look, um, speaking of things that don't quite live up to the billing, Greg, and I think this is even more concerning, very disturbing development with India. Now, I'm hoping you're going to reassure me this time. India is part of this new quad group that we're relying on that is in part an Australian initiative to defend ourselves from China, that the quad being the United States, Japan, India and ourselves. But once again yesterday, India, and it was having, you know, the Prime Minister's having talks with our Prime Minister, joined us in saying, yes, 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 the war in Ukraine was a worry. Who doesn't say that? But again, it refused to criticise Russia. What is going on here? Because this does not sound to me like a good ally that would come hurtling to our defence in any real confrontation. 
No, I, I think you're right, Andrew. I think that's right. I don't think India will ever be that kind of ally. In India is not going to be another Great Britain. Um, there, now, there is a plea in mitigation you can make for India here. I, I think India should condemn the invasion. And I'm very disappointed that they don't, as someone who loves India. Very disappointed. However, they see themselves in an absolutely existential struggle for survival with China. And they get most of their high-tech weaponry from Russia. They get nuclear subs from Russia. They get um, air defence systems, which uh, they would use against the Chinese from Russia. The only bit of high tech that Russia does uh, well is military. Now, this reflects, I think, a tremendous failure in the India-US relationship. When George W. Bush, you know, um, revolutionised that relationship, accepted India's nuclear weapons, all the rest of it, the idea was that America was going to become India's main defence supplier. But American products are too expensive. The regulatory requirements that they put on India are too elaborate. And one way and another, India has never moved away from this dependence on Russian uh, high-tech kit. Now, all I'd say in their defence is it's a bit like when the Allies were in alliance with Stalin in order to defeat Hitler. The Indians see their military supplies from Russia as absolutely essential to their struggle with China. I don't think that excuses them. I think your criticism of it is very well made, but it's it's a very difficult... Uh, you know, they live between China and Pakistan. Well, they're the two neighbours you'd really like to have, aren't they? Uh, and um, <laughs> they feel that they'd be putting their <laughs> defence equipment at risk if they fell out with Russia. Look, you make good points, Greg. The only thing that uh, I would add to this that concerns me too is how much internet support, Twitter support from India there is for the Russians in the fight against Ukraine. There's a real anti-West sort of chippiness that is another little worry, a concern for me. Greg Sheridan, thank you so much. Uh, appreciate your insights.